Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to be going over the NBA slate on DraftKings for Friday, May the 10th. Uh, we got another showdown slate for Friday. There's only one game um, Friday night at Golden State Houston, game six of their series. Uh, this is the only game that's on for Friday, so there's a showdown slate. Uh, like always, for my showdown slate videos, we're going to work our way through the player pool. We'll kind of start from top to bottom. Uh, we'll talk about the studs that I want to pay up for. Uh, we'll talk about like the mid-range and value plays. If there's good value that I like, I'll be sure to hit on that as well. Uh, we'll pretty much just try and go through just about every option or every playable option on the showdown slate since it is such a limited pool. Uh, just before we do get started, guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button down below uh, so that way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Um, so starting off at the top, James Harden, uh, to no surprise, is our most expensive option on this shirt on slate. 11800 is his price tag if you want to play him in your utility spot. If you want to play Harden as your captain, he's $17,700. Um, Harden obviously is captain worthy on this slate, uh, but Kevin Durant is going to be out for the Warriors, which is going to open up a ton of usage for Steph Curry, for Klay Thompson. Uh, both Curry and Thompson this year with Durant and Boogie Cousins off the floor see like a 10% use, 10% uh, bump in usage. I think Curry and Thompson are two guys that I'm going to really try and fit in on this shutdown slate. Uh, going to a guy like Thompson at 8,400 really stands out. He might be one of my favorite plays on this shutdown slate. If you want to play Thompson, your captain, he's only 12,600, 5,000 dollars cheaper than Harden, and I don't think Thompson's going to outscore Harden, but we could legit see Thompson put up 45, 50 draftings points. I think he averages like 1.23, 1.25 fantasy points per minute when you take those two guys off the floor. And him and Curry both have a usage rate over like 35%. So I like going Curry-Thompson. I really like playing Thompson in your captain because he's so uh, cheaper than, or so much cheaper than Harden, so much cheaper than Curry that he gives you a lot of salary to work with. And he does have similar upside to those guys when you take Durant and uh, Boogie off the floor. So I really like going to Thompson. He's one of my favorite plays on the slate. Also really like Curry. I think Curry at 10400 is a, just a bit underpriced uh, for now that Kevin Durant is out and now that uh, Boogie's obviously out as well. But now that Durant's out, Curry and Thompson are going to have to do all the heavy lifting for the Warriors. And I think those are two guys that you do want to try and fit in on this uh, showdown slate. I really like doing like a, a stud stack of like Thompson, Curry, and Harden. Uh, but if you do want to put Harden in here, it's pretty tough. You're only left with 5,000 remaining per player. Uh, but it can be worked around. I think with Kevin Durant out, that's going to open up some cheap value. With a guy like Jonas Jarebko, who's all the way down here at uh, $1,800, $1,800, he's probably going to be like the chalk value play, which obviously makes sense. He's so cheap. He should see the minutes. I expect him and McKinney get most of Durant's minutes. So those are two guys you could look to for value. Uh, right now, I'm assuming Jarebko starts. So I would put him in there at 1800 And then you're all the way back up to 6700 remaining per player. Uh, so you can maybe go like Clint Capella and then uh, you can play Clint Capella and P.J. Tucker if you want to do that. I'm not the biggest fan of Capella, so I'd probably try and find someone else. Uh, you couldn't get Chris Paul in there because if you wanted to play Chris Paul, that leave you just short of getting to Iguodala. I would really like to do that if I could. But these three guys right here, taking out Harden, Thompson, Curry, Jarebko, those are probably like the three guys I would look to build around on this showdown slate. You can obviously play someone else in your captain spot. If you want to put Curry in captain, if you want to pay up for Harden in your captain, you can do that. Uh, but I just like the upside that Thompson gives you for cheaper. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts up 40, 50 drafting points here. Uh, so I do really like him a lot as your captain play. Uh, but let's talk about some of these other guys. So Draymond Green, you would think, really benefits from Curry or from Durant and Boogie off the floor, but he actually doesn't. Uh, so far this year, with both those guys off the floor, he only has like a 20 or like a 16, 17 percent usage rate. I can't remember it to be exact. He doesn't. Or I think he actually sees like a decrease in his fantasy production when you take Durant off the floor. The main beneficiaries are Thompson and Curry. I do like Draymond. Obviously, it's a one-game slate, so he's in play, but. He's up to 10K. I would rather play Curry, definitely. I would rather just try and find $400 to play Steph Curry or even save and go down to Thompson, who I think is like 8600 8, He's like 1400 cheaper than Draymond Green. Uh, so Draymond Green, even with Durant off the floor, I think is a guy you could probably stay away from. I would rather play Curry, and I would rather play Thompson. I uh, talked about Harden. Obviously, Harden's a great play, especially if you go to Jarebko, then that should allow you to easily fit in Harden. Uh, Chris Paul at 7,800, 
just a really good play, solid play. He's going to be very consistent. I would try and find the salary to do it, uh, to, like to get up to uh, Clay Thompson if you can. Thompson's only 600 more, and I do prefer Thompson, but uh, Chris Paul continues to be a guy that you can rely on for 30, 35, 40 drafting points a night. Maybe Harden will have an off game, and you'll spike a ceiling out of Chris Paul, and he'll go for like 45, 50. Uh, his best game in this series was, I think, game three, where he went for 40 drafting points, or yeah, game two, he went for 40 drafting points. That was his best game in the series. He's been consistent, hasn't really provided a ton of upside though uh, you could look to other guys on this slate I don't think Paul's as necessary especially on a showdown slate where you're kind of looking for upside Paul really hasn't shown it in this series I really like going to Thompson I think Thompson just has more upside for a little bit more uh, PJ Tucker another guy that's been very consistent in this series and he's actually given you some upside he does he has had some big games in this series uh, I think game three 43 drafting points or game four 43 drafting points out of PJ Tucker uh, he's been getting points and rebounds. He's been contributing in both categories. Back-to-back uh, -back double doubles last two games, 17 and 10, and then 13 and 10. Uh, we know PJ Tucker is going to do uh, defense or going to pick up defensive stats as well. He's going to do his job uh, defensively, uh, so he gives you extra upside with the defensive stats. He can get rebounds. He can hit those corner threes. So PJ Tucker at 7,200, even though he's so closely priced to Chris Paul, he might honestly be the better play over Chris Paul. Uh, for 600 less. Eric Gordon has like a mid-range sort of cheap value. I really like it, 6,600. Also, Andre Iguodala at 5,800 is a really good cheap play you can use. Like if you were to plug those two guys in here, you would probably have enough for Harden. You should have enough for Harden. Uh, so you could definitely look to do that if you wanted to. I don't really think there's any other cheap value plays I would want to go to, though. Like I expect uh, a lot of Durant's minutes to go to Jarebko and to go to uh, Alfonso McKinney. Maybe, like, you see some lineups where Sean Livingston gets more minutes or maybe they run big and, like, Kevon Looney gets more minutes. But I think uh, whoever starts between Jarepko and McKinney is probably going to be the biggest beneficiary. I expect it to be Jarepko. So he's my favorite value at 1,800. Uh, he really stands out as one of the better cheap options on this showdown slate. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm looking at, at this sh on this slate. Uh, Thompson Curry are my two favorite plays, whether – you want to play Thompson in your captain or you want to go to someone else, like let's let's try and build a line with Thompson in our captain. We'll try and fill out these three. Uh, so if we want to play Harden along with these two guys, Thompson and Curry, that leaves us 6,700. I think we already looked at this earlier, but you could definitely play P.J. Tucker and uh, Clint Capella. That's something you could do if you uh, do that or if you want to do that. I'm not in love with Capella. He's probably not my favorite play, but if he fits, he fits. If you want to get up to Chris Paul and you want to play Harden and Paul together, uh, that would leave you enough to play Austin Rivers, but you wouldn't have enough for Andre Iguodala, so that's kind of a choice you have to make. You could go Tucker and play Iguodala over Capella. If you if you think Iguodala outscores Capella, then that's a lineup you could look to do. Um, if you wanted to do something different and maybe play Curry or Harden in your captain, let's see what we can do if we play Curry in our captain. We definitely want to get uh, Thompson and Jarepko in there, so plug in Thompson, plug in Jarepko. It leaves you 8,000 remaining per player. It's pretty tough to get to Harden. You might could do it. If you plug in Harden, that leaves you 6,200 remaining per player. Then you could get Iguodala, and you could get Eric Gordon. So that's definitely a lineup you could look to do right here with Curry and your captain over Thompson. You still have enough for Iguodala and Harden. Uh, so I do really like this lineup quite a bit. This would probably be like if I was playing like cash games or something, this would probably be the lineup that I would use. Uh, let's see now if we want to play Harden or our captain, what that allows us to do. Uh, so we definitely want to try and get Curry in there. We want to try and get Thompson in there. If we plug in e or McKinney, or not McKinney, Drepko as our value, that leaves us 58.50. That leaves you enough for Iguodala. Don't, doesn't leave you enough for Capella, the, you know, though you'd be short of Capella. If you think Austin Rivers maybe gets some run, you want to plug him in there. You could plug in Rivers, and then that would leave you enough for P.J. Tucker. Uh, not my favorite lineup, though. I think Austin Rivers would probably be a guy I would try and avoid. He hasn't been getting a ton of minutes lately. Uh, I think he's been getting about, like, 20 minutes off the bench. I'll pull up his game log real quick. Yeah, about mid-20s and minutes off the bench. He saw 33 minutes in uh, game four. Was very productive in that game. But I don't think Rivers is the highest upside play. And since he's 4,400, which is kind of expensive for him, he would probably be someone I would avoid. So going back to that lineup with Curry, new captain, Curry, Harden, Clay Thompson, 8,400, plug in Jarepko, and that leaves you 6,200. Then you could go to um, Eric Gordon and Andre Iguodala. I really like that lineup right there. 
I'm usually I'm not someone that like gives out lineups, but if you wanted to play that lineup, I guess you could. I don't really like to give out lineups, but there's one you could play if you wanted to. I think that lineup looks really good. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have that though because there's zero dollars remaining per player or zero dollars remaining salary. So that means people are probably going to use this lineup a lot. So if you wanted to be a little contrarian, be a little bit different, maybe leave some salary on the table, then you could go to like Capella over uh, Gordon. That leaves you 400 remaining. You're getting a little bit more of a contrarian lineup then. If you wanted to play Gordon, but then play someone different, like say McKinney uh, winds up starting, you could play McKinney then. Maybe you'd have to downgrade though. You'd have to play uh, Capella over Gordon. Uh, that's just a way you could like mix it up a little bit, be a little bit contrarian. But those are just kind of my thoughts on this showdown slate. Uh, quickly recapping, I think what I'm going to be trying to do the most is pay up for Thompson and Curry and then plug in Drepko or McKinney, whichever one of those two guys starts for Durant, and then kind of working from there. If you can get to Harden, I'll try and fit Harden in. If you can't, then you could probably play like a bunch of mid-range guys, like you, you could play Paul Tucker and Gordon or something, or Paul Tucker, Iguodala. Whenever you're building your lineup, just kind of see what works for you. Uh, but the three guys I would kind of start with would be uh, Curry, Thompson, and Jarepko. Uh But I think that is it for this shout-out slate, guys. I think that is it for the video. Hopefully you did enjoy this video, and hopefully it did help you. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure you click that like button down below. I would really appreciate it, and make sure you subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, or you can hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below or uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one. Uh, good luck tonight. Peace.